Hey guys, it's Matt. Welcome to Speed Tutor. And there's one thing that plagues so many developers, so many people around the world, and it's making sure that you don't lose your work. And the best way to do it is to create regular backups, whether that's backing up locally, saving drive space, using an asset to make that even easier, or whether that's using GitHub or Unity Teams to be able to use those features to always have version control so you can go back if the worst were to happen. Just like my previous video, you may find John Riccatello somewhere. And if you find where he is, comment down below. So first we're gonna learn about local backups and then look at all the cloud services. So for your working project that you have here, in my case, what you could do for the biggest part of call it, right click your assets folder, go show in Explorer. You can find your project and you can see you can open it and you can see that you've got assets and library and everything like that. Best way to do it is right click, send to, compressed zip folder. And remember, whenever you zip any of your folders and compress them, that can reduce the file size by between 50 and 90%, depending on how big and how much those files can be compressed. And then what I like to do is create a brand new folder on another hard drive, somewhere like that, even if it's external, and give it a name like the date, the project name, and just name it a backup. So if worst were to happen, you have a local copy of something. Now, some of the time with your project, it might be absolutely ginormous. This one here is about seven gigabytes in size, but the best way to reduce it if you're going to compress it or make a backup is make a copy of this original project before you do anything, but you can delete the library folder. And if we just check the size of this library folder, you can see that that's four gigabytes by itself and it can often reduce it by 50 to 60 percent it just means that the library folder in the end when it's reopened by unity will be rebuilt so it will take up more space on your hard disk but for backups it's a really nice way to instantly save space so you can make your backups much smaller and then if you're looking to back things up in a further place, you can use some online storage solutions like Dropbox, which will give you two gigabytes for things like OneDrive and even Google Drive, which are quite cheap to keep big files stacked up so you don't take up that precious PC space. Now, if you say to me, oh, I don't want to do any of that, I just want a really nice and easy way to do it. So there's an asset on the Unity Asset Store called Export Project to Zip. And this is just an editor tool which allows you to directly in Unity export your project to zip without you having to create any folders, reduce anything. I'm going to import that into my project as long as you've already downloaded it. So then if we go file and we use export project to zip, we'll press that button and you can see this project has not been saved. Would you like to save it before zipping it? So yeah, I'll save, I want to save it first. And the current scene has not been saved because it'll remind you that sometimes they need to be saved properly. Just press yes. And then we're going to choose where that I want to be able to save this out to. So I'm just going to put this in the folder that I had before. I'm just going to name this underscore two because I want to then zip this out into this location. I'll hit save and you can see directly in Unity, it's making the backup for us. You never needed to leave Unity for one second and you can do it all nice and easily. Then you'll get a notification in the console saying success. It was exported successfully. Then I can go inside that folder and I can open up the backup and it has everything there but it brought that seven gigabyte project down to three gigabytes just for a nice easy backup and do be sure to check out my patreon to get access to over 225 different scripts assets and projects and there's also a massive list down in the description too and i'm going to show you how to use github so you never miss out so you've got full version control in a nice easy way so the best way to get started is to go to desktop.github.com and download the github desktop client for windows and there is one for mac just click on that to be able to download. I would recommend just to click on the EXE. It will welcome you to GitHub Desktop and you can just click sign into GitHub or if you don't already have a free account, you can create one yourself. So once you've created yourself a simple account, you can click to sign in and you can give GitHub Desktop access to your GitHub account. Then you can press authorize and then it will ask you to configure it and you can use your GitHub account with the same email address and click finish. Now there's a set of buttons that you can create. So you can clone a repository from the internet if you've already got one on your account. You can create one locally on your hard drive if you've never made a project before and you're starting afresh. But if you want to clone an existing project that's on your hard drive, it's a great way to back things up. So we can click this. Make sure you click choose and find the location of your Unity project. And here I've got a project called Pong Game Ultra that I was working on and I can click select. And you can see that it's currently not a repository, so it's not built to be able to be used, but we can just click the little button which says create repository. 
Now we can give it a name, we can just keep it the same name as it was before, you can add a little description, then you can choose to initialize with a readme which on your main page you can have something which shows some details about your asset if you really want. And to get ignore you want to make sure that you choose the unity option which will make sure that it won't include any unity files which are large or temporary which are not really relevant. You can set a license if you understand that or want to use it but it doesn't matter for now and you can just click create repository. And then if it does bring up a message saying that initialize the git lfs just press not now because our project shouldn't be big enough to require this. And then once you see this you can see the history which does have all the assets that we'll need to upload and we can push to the repository and then we make sure that we can keep this private if we want but it's still got the same name and the same description we can push the repository to github now we've added this project to github now if we want to open it and make some changes we'll see how this affects the actual system now I'm in my project and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a quick script. So now we've created this test script in our Unity project. Now if you go back you can see that I have now the test script which is a change that can be added. Now that I can give some information at the bottom to say what well, have I created test script and you can give a good description if you need some more information. If you've added a lot of different things I've been working on something particular and you can click commit to main. And once we've done that we need to make sure that we click push to origin. And then if I go to my main GitHub page and I go to my assets and then I go inside the Pong game, you'll see that test script is there and it has been created. And there are some quick shortcuts on your main page, which are, and this will show in Explorer to show you exactly where all your GitHub repository is. Or then view on GitHub and it will take you straight there. And in the actual directory, you'll see the file called git ignore. If you open that up in a text editor or code editor, you can see that all the things that Unity will ignore. So say you've got any big files, you can actually specify to actually not get those uploaded to Git. If you've got some really big texture files that you don't want to commit, or maybe some light maps from Unity, you need to make sure they have the extension for that and make sure you add that in here. Because you would have to use Git LFS, like it said initially, if you wanted to upload much larger files over the current storage. I'm gonna give you an example. If you accidentally remove your repository or come to a new PC, you might want to add your repository back from the internet. So I'm gonna drag my folder and put it into the recycle bin, and then it'll say that it can't find my Pong game Ultra. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say that I'm going to clone again. And as you can see again in my tutorials folder where I previously had the game, you can see Pong Game Ultra. And now I'm going to open that up in Unity again to make sure that it's all okay and functional. It may take a little bit of time because we have to rebuild the library folder and the temporary files. And as you can see that it's all working as we expected. So I brought the project back from the dead. And again, if you need to access this from a new computer or anything like that, you can click clone repository or go to file clone repository. Now if you want to use a Unity's version control, which is similar to what you would do with GitHub, you can go to Unity Solutions version control. I'll put the link in the description. You need to make sure that you have yourself a Unity account. You can click to start for free and you can follow the process and you get a free 5 gigabyte of storage. And you can see from the pricing plan, you can get around 10 gigabytes free. And then for every additional gigabyte, you pay 75 cents a month. So once you've started for free, you can click the drop down and you can go to your dashboard. And when you're in your dashboard, you were most likely prompted to create an organization. If not, you can click in the top right and where you can say switch organization, you can just hit new. This is where you're going to keep everything under almost a profile between where everything's going to be. And in the cloud, you'll see projects along here. And you can see in the DevOps, that you've got the organization and this is exactly where all the files will be. So if I go into Speed Tutor, this is one of my organizations and this is where all your repositories will be or all the files that you save. With that all created, I'll show you in Unity Hub. If you're going to create yourself a brand new project, now you can see that I'll just make a new universal render pipeline on 2022.3 and you can see we can give it a project name, call it Awesome Game, choose a location, then this is where you would select the organization. So mine was called Speed Tutor and I want to use Unity's version control. And you can see here, it automatically knows I wanted to use the Speed Tutor organization because it's created in the cloud system. And then the repository is the same as the game name. And I already had the closest server to me, which was in the Netherlands. And when we can hit create, then when you first load up Unity, we will have the version control. And if it isn't there, you can go to window and then you can go to Unity version control. And here is you can select everything that needs to be uploaded to the cloud to get this backed up. So you can give comments like initial commit or the things that you might change. 
So you can say initial upload just to make it easy and then go check in changes. They've all disappeared now and everything's been successfully added. If we add a brand new material or something like that, you can go create and you can see we add a new material, which is called new material one. You can see that the project settings have been updated and the new material has been added. Then we can make a comment of created new material. And you can see from there, you could create better naming so you can actually know what you were doing when this happened. And you can also do check in changes. Then when you go back to your specific organization name and go to repositories, you can see awesome game is here. And you can see that everything has been uploaded with the assets and everything was there. And you can see that it gives you some information on the asset manager and the integration in there. And you've got everything added that you did before. And you can see that the storage that's used for this was just one megabyte and it will keep that library folder to a minimum when you've got everything in usage. And you can actually see that because I've got Unity Pro, I've got 50 gigabytes of internal storage. So I've got plenty and you can also check that in your administration tab in terms of your storage and any other billing and finances. And if you ever need to navigate back, just go to the DevOps and you'll be able to see your repositories. Now you might ask me, if you move to another computer or you want to share it with a friend, how can you get access to this? Now, normally, if you're connected to the account which is associated, you can click, see at the top which says add, you can click the drop down and you can add a UVCS repository. And if you click that, you get your repositories here. You can use those repositories available to be able to add those to your system if they're currently not there. And of course, you've got all things like file locks, code reviews, branches, change set labels and other attributes that you can use. And there's lots more documentation online for you to be able to learn about the Unity version control. And do let me know if you'd like to know more and I can make a video on it too. Do check out my Patreon to get access to over 225 different scripts, assets and projects you cannot find anywhere else. And do check out all the links down below for all the best sales, savings and everything you can find for this month. And also a big thank you to all my patrons. A massive thank you to Peter Steiner and very Shooter for the amazing support and thank you to everybody else who comes to watch the video. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.